beer. That's why we drink it here. How's it going, everyone? Today, got something a little, 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 little smaller to work on. Uh, this was donated to the channel by TC the Pack Rat. Uh, I asked him what was wrong with it, and he said, it doesn't work. Oh, okay. So we are going to take a look at this. This is a General Electric model 3-5303A. Made in Hong Kong. You know, where Hong Kong Fui comes from. A uh, little portable cassette player. Mini cassette recorder player. Uh, most of these are from the 80s. Uh, this has an actual little speaker. Ooh. With some really, you know it has some really great sound. Ooh. And, uh, you know, just a simple, probably run-of-the-mill. Uh, nothing special about this one. You know, we have our, uh, our REM. <laughs> Whatever, REM. Okay, on our mic, our volume, uh, mic sensitivity, high and low. We have our microphone right here. You know, it's all glory. Uh, regular, just a little cassette player. And it takes four AA batteries. That's when you can record on it. And you can either have your, you have a nifty little light here that tells you you're, you're recording and probably your, it says record and battery. So I'm sure when the batteries get low, it turns on and goes red. But we are going to open this little guy up and see what we can come up with and see if we can't get him working. Uh, we'll stick some batteries in it and see what it's doing first because he just told me it doesn't work. So I'll get you turned around here and get you set up and we will see if we can't fix it. Oh, just noticed something. This gorgeous little handy dandy lanyard for around your wrist so you don't so you don't drop it while you're listening to your disco and swinging around and yeah. So let's get set up and let's see if we can't get this thing fixed. Yeah, let's see. Yep, yeah. General Electric mini cassette recorder player. I think everybody had one of these in the 80s if you grew up in the 80s like I did. Everybody had a Walkman or some sort of uh, portable cassette device on your on you or a boombox, you know, you, or both. You had a boombox and then you had one of these for while you're out and about. This one also has a 9 volt, 9? 6 volt. 6 volt adapter that you could buy for this and change it over and ear, your earphones. But this, let's see, uh, service, what's it say? Service questions call the General Electric Answering Center, 800-626-2000. So if you have any other questions about this, make sure you call that number and I'm sure they can answer all your questions. Four double A's. Well, hell. And here I brought triple A's over with me. I thought it was triples, but it takes four double A's in a nifty little cartridge here. And one bent spring or a contact. So we'll get him straightened out and we'll get some batteries in it and I'll go get the right batteries I should say and we will load them up and let's see what this thing does do. And I'll bet you it doesn't work. Okay, I got us some high-powered, expensive uh, AA alkalines here that we will try in it. But first, we need to see if we can't straighten out this 
contact spring so at least we know that our batteries are making contact we want to give it every chance we can for it to work and just kind of uh, straighten get him uh, that's getting better but you can find TC the pack rat on YouTube he's been donating quite a few items for us to, to play with so why don't you go check out his YouTube channel uh, you can find him on Instagram and Facebook I I don't really get into all those social media sites but um, he does a lot of Instagram and and Facebook I'm lucky if I go on Facebook once a month and most of the time it's just on ooh got that it looks pretty crusty down in there and I'll bet you that is why it doesn't work looks like one of the Yeah, can tell right away what's up with this one. If you look right down in there, I don't know if my camera will focus. There we go. One of the tabs that makes contact with the battery pack is actually corroded and rusted off so we need to get in there and see if we can't make us a new one new contact for it that happens a lot on this stuff that has takes batteries uh, you know it on our pinball machines and that there's batteries are always left in them and then they get all corroded and they rot everything so we're gonna have to take this apart anyway three screws there and okay two they're two different sizes the two small ones go at the top the long one goes down here at the bottom now is that it or aha uh -huh. I see another little screw watch just pull it open and crap just flies everywhere like my screw almost did Okay. Well, see, a lot of times if you have the door open, they will separate. See, we'll turn that. That's all the way down to zero. Let's take our volume knob off. That may be holding us up. Come on. Come on out of there. There we go. Okay, now. That help us? Not much. See, I see these are trying to come out at the same time, so I'm wondering. Okay, how about our little switch here? 
to that. Mm. Nope, that's not holding us up. What? There we go. I was holding up on our on our two jacks. And that's our little microphone that's in there and our LED. And look at that massive speaker. You know, that just has wonderful sound. Okay. You can see, now you can see that our tab here should look like this one. So when you push your battery pack in, it makes contact on those two. And let's see which one is. Yep, this is just kind of holds, puts pressure on it once you latch it. So when you unlatch it, it'll, it'll come out. That is our suppository, or ne positive. Okay, so we push this in, so the bottom one is a positive, and that's this guy right here. I have to look at this a little bit and see if I can't come up with a solution to, to fix that, since it doesn't work. Okay, what we need is a piece of this spring steel here. So we can make us a new one that goes on there. And I may Oh, that is a contact there. What's that? See that doesn't do anything. That one in the middle. It doesn't touch anything except the plastic. Usually the, there's usually one that when you pull down on it it'll kind of help spring it out but I do see a little there is a white wire on it. Okay anyway we need to make a new battery contact and what I come up with is, I think I have some spring steel in, in this guy. This is a, an old vacuum cleaner charging base. But the, the vac was junk. But, being how I am, I saved it because of the power supply that is on it and you never know when you might need something else out of it so I just kind of threw it in a box of electrical stuff electrical pieces parts and it looks like maybe now we might be able to use something off of it. So we got some nice, nice big ones here that we can make one out of. Not two of them. So if we screw one up, we can make another. If we screw two up, then I'm back to looking for something something else. Uh, do I have a pair of wire cutters here by chance? Yeah, I got a pair of wire cutters. 
we don't need these. Plastic, because you never know when you need a piece of plastic. And this is a let's see what it, output AC seven volt. It's an AC, not a DC. Okay, now we have these. These are perfect for what we want to do. That's nice spring steel <sighs> now we have to mm -hmm. let's see I know it's too too fat so we'll have to cut it down but I am thinking can use tell you what let's I need to get get this contact plate out of here so we can work with it a little bit so we can see what the heck's going on paper help us get any more wire yeah it did there we go now I can unsolder those and we can take the whole plate and work on it can't see what I'm doing anyway can you okay uh, I mean I gotta get my soldering station set up so we can uh, desolder that and get those wires off of there so we can start making us a new one okay I got her out and what I'm looking at is it looks like if we had about half of this we could it would be really good so let's let's see if we can ooh Two, so whichever one we like more is the one we will use. Ah. 
Alright, get it out of there. Oh, three. You can see the, the critter nest there. It looks like um, shop rack, doesn't it? Okay, Just cut the end off here. Right, there we go. Now we got some pretty good spring steel here. Flatten them out and and see what we can come up with about making making one. Yep, that one broke. Yeah, you get the blower up. Four pH can that's in there. And yeah, that's not time for that at all. I'm gonna say we probably bring it over to bench, we'll try it. Open it up and see if it's in the Alright. Now it's looking pretty cruddy. I'm looking in there because I see a couple of things. See those are both. And they both have to be the same as far as uh, with our little whoop de do sticking up here to make contact on our battery pack. Maybe we'll get some of the crap out of the way and go for it. Little sideways bicep steel. Hardest part is going to be getting it to stay in. Because we can. Yeah, maybe. I'm going to put a little little loop on it. And then we want to have... Something like that. I don't know if there's sheet metal screws or if there's actually a, a nut or something behind it. They are sheet metal screws. And if we bend it. There. Now that don't work, I'll put a slot down the middle of it and uh, try with a regular screwdriver. start hammering on this stuff and try and straighten it out it it gets pretty brittle okay that's I can't that's yeah, what we want now I'm gonna have to figure out how we are gonna keep it in place see the other one had two little tabs on it that they pushed through and then glued it with some sort of black tar. Let's see if we Yeah, 
Something like that. So when we push it in, it contacts them both. Okay. Now I'm just going to have to. I need to figure out how we're going to. Hold it down on there. We were just trying to power to it. Okay, I'll bring you back when I figure something out. Why don't we just do what they did? Not having the heating blower in the way it would be easier to do. Don't we just glue it down? Crap and hiss and everything that was Oop, in, it. Well, I mean, in the heating system and actually okay. the whole thing, get it cleaned, but um, it is winter time here. My pressure washer is put away, blown out for the winter time. Okay. Over the I need to clean this all up with alcohol so our glue will stick. Because I had to. Because I had to pre tent that new piece that we're going to put in. So I got flux all over the place. Over here that I tried to use in the car cleaner, those two jokes, that one, and that one. So I figured we'll use those guys up for help to. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> douching it, <laughs> we're going to douche it out with uh, vinegar and uh, once we kind of clear that system out and kind of just wash the rest of the crap off the whole thing. That's musty uh, one that I have on everywhere. in the background, if, if you can hear it. I just kind of <laughs> forget to the turn in, the body and the of the pause it but while I'm working and over here I just kind of go ahead and turn the camera on and start videoing and then I realize that that that's still playing over there I got this uh, machine from Harvey Spooner. He had two of them, and with the two of them, he had the other one that had two lights on. So I figured we will take these guys and do what we need to do. Check to even get these to operate. And, uh, yeah, why don't them. we just so, uh, further ado, let's go get her. glue him right. down? Trusty jumper pack out. Not much meat left on these wires, but let's see if we can kind of get on these things and see if they do anything. We only have to worry about the tip that touches the mixed contact and I put it on backwards and you didn't even tell me and now I gotta clean the glue glue up. Okay after letting that glue dry I think we got us a nice little piece that will work. I pre-tinted these with solder so I can get them back on and as you can see I labeled them so I knew right where they go back on. <clears throat> but I think that that glue is going to work good. I think that's going to hold it and it it lines up. I think we're in good shape. I get my soldering iron turned on, and now I need to get that soldered back in place, and get it hooked up. So I'll I'll spare you that, and I'll get her soldered in in place. Okay, got everything soldered back in. And I put our little board back down on. Now let's see that's gonna slide right in. This there's a piece up on the 
clips in like so. Now, we need, let's see, if it'll play. Stop eject forward. Shouldn't really be a, a volume or a volume uh, on off switch on it. I don't think anyway. Let's see volume, minimum, maximum. All right, so we should. Still nothing. Okay, let's... Take a look at our battery holder. Make sure we got contact on all of our batteries. Oops, that's AC. Yep, six and a half volts. Slide him in. Come on, leads. Work with me here. Okay. Plus. Okay. What's going on? Should have six and a half out here. And we don't. Okay, let me check my work. All right, had my contact plate upside down. Our pins were pointing down, and as you can see, they need to be up. So let's try this again.
Okay. Let's see, that's on, on, stop, rewind. Okay, play is up here. And there it's moving. down, didn't I? No, I think it's all the way up. Max, yep. Okay, let's let's grab a cassette. Mm, that's the mic. I think that's the mic volume. Nope, just says volume. if I can round up a set of headphones and see if that works. Okay, we got power to it, uh, but uh, what I figured out was when you turn it on, when you push play, it is going through the microphone uh, like it's on record. So uh, hopefully I didn't screw up my tape, but I didn't push the record, just pushed play. So you can see when you push play that light comes on if you tap on it now, can you see that and yeah, the little light flashes and as I talk you can see that the uh, mic comes on so it, it's stuck in record mode Oop, I don't need to shut you off uh, so we need, I, I'm figuring, there's a little micro switch in there somewhere that turns off the mic and switches it over to tape to just play back and not record. So we're going to take her apart again. And this time, we need to get all the way to the mechanism so we can see what turns that on and off. What do we want to go rip snorting on the wires? have to prop it up. Okay. So let's this is play. Let's pause. That's off. So what switches
that switches that over. To turn it off. micro switch, leaf switch. It's really hard to see. Let's see, can I... Yeah, I can move him all out of the way a little bit. Get you zoomed in. There's a little little switch right here that when you push play but that would why would that turn on the microphone if we can actually get it to record mode. Okay, I'm going to study this a little bit, and because you can't see what I'm doing anyway, I'm going to study this a little bit and see if I can't figure out what, if there's a micro switch that's just not touching. It's only supposed to when you're in record. Let me see what I can find out. Instead of you just watching me stare at it and and keep playing with it. Okay, I got to thinking about uh, the dual cassette decks and that that um, I have been doing. And all of those had a, a slide switch on them to, uh, to turn on the second deck. Um, and to record, it would slide, that little slide. I don't know if you've watched all my videos, but I got to thinking about that, so I turned this circuit board, stood it up on end, and right here is a little slide mechanism. When it's all the way in, the mic is activated for record. You pull it out, and it works. So I'm going to watch how, how long I play that. Ah. So, a little bugger. We got her working. Now we need to get it all put back together and test out everything else, test out the the headphone jack on it and that and see what we come up with. But I do believe we can get her put back together. That little 
slide mechanism is right goes on that little pin right right there that little pin is what slides up in there and that's what moves that back and forth when you hit record it should push it in so the mic comes on and then you can start it'll start recording you know with the heads moving and all that and if you, after you take it off of record it should kick and push that lever all the way out the way it is and that turns playback back on so let's get this put back together and let's make sure we get that little that little finger right down in there where she belongs See, it missed it. Now it's got her. Got her by the horns. But that would be him, right? Not her. I guess it depends on what horns you're getting a hold of. Don't you want to get put back together? What's weird is this little speaker doesn't mount. It just sits right there. And I guess the case holds it together. There's, there is a date. That I can't read. Bummer. Sorry about the shaking. Get those speaker wires tucked, or speaker, mic 
wires tucked in there. Get our Stay in there, little screw, little speaker. You remember where all the what size screws go where? And now the big one goes at the bottom and anchors to smaller ones at the top volume knob on battery we still have yep still got a cassette in it you forgot you notice anything missing the lanyard all right I'll get the lanyard put on it now <laughs> you don't have to watch me do that and tear it all back apart Okay, now, well, what did we have to do to this little guy? We had to fix the uh, corrosion damage that um, rotted off one of the contacts for the battery pack. And we had to mess around with that little slide switch and we got everything going. And now... Now she's working. So I'd like to thank TC the Pack Rat for donating this to the channel for video purposes. And that, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video of <laughs> fixing uh, General Electric portable mini cassette recorder player 
I still got to look at the model. Model number 3-5303A. And if you wait, if you, I will upload a video of this playing after this video. So until next time, see ya.